Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and we're doing another episode of Ask GN where you submit the questions on the tech side of the industry or gaming and we'll try and answer them. So if you have questions for next week, post them below in the comments and I will address those in the next episode if we can get to them. First off today, we're starting with a DX12 question, which is kind of interesting. And it comes from Charlie Browns 112 who says, shouldn't we be expecting higher performance gains from Xbox One ports given that they are also built on a low-level API, very similar to DX12. It was mind-boggling that Rise of the Tomb Raider was released without DX12 support at launch and with minimal performance gains, if any at all. So uh, the main thing here is that the Xbox One API is not the same as DX12. They're both low-level, they both go to the metal, so to speak, but they're not the same, and that means that it's not as simple as just sort of porting the entire language set that communicates with the API from one platform to the other. So they do actually have to build these game developers from the ground up for DX12 support to work properly. And you can find that in our interview with Chris Roberts where we talk about Vulkan and DX12 and how to get it all working with the best level of, of optimization, the developers have to sort of start from zero and work upward. And that's because if you just do a wrapper, which is basically sort of changing API calls, doing a wrapper will introduce overhead so DX12 wrapped suddenly becomes worse than DX11 just because it wasn't built from the ground up for it. So that's really kind of the top level of why these things happen the way they do. And games like Total War, Warhammer will be pretty interesting to look at because that's another DX12 supported game. But I know that they're still working on the support and it's still being built in right now. So it's kind of a, we'll see how well it really works out at the end because we don't know if it was built ground up with it or sort of added later with some encouragement from GPU manufacturers, things like that. So that hopefully answers some of that question. Speaking specifically to Rise of the Tomb Raider, if you look at other benchmarks like Ashes of Singularity, you'll see the same sort of thing where initial benchmarks show DX11 actually performed better or pretty similar to DX12. And those benchmarks have improved steadily as the game has updated to improve its DX12 integration. And that's what you'll see with Rise of the Tomb Raider and other games as well. Until we get to a point where DX12 is the only API being used, or Vulkan, and not DX11, I, I think that's pretty much going to be the case for everything. But the next question does tie into this a bit. It's from Drake Owen, who says, or Drake Owens, who says, Hi, Steve. I have two AskGN questions. One, when will we see benchmarks of DX12 using one graphics card and the IGP? And two, what are your thoughts on the Windows Store DX12 attempt to restrict third-party add-ons such as Fraps? So a few things here. Let's start with the second question first. The restriction of these third-party tools, it's not all just Microsoft trying to restrict things. There is actually, uh, at an overlay level, DX12 doesn't work the same as DX11. So Fraps isn't necessarily restricted as much as it is just not supported. And I don't know if Fraps is being actively developed anymore. Other overlays have the same issue. CAM, for example, NDXT's CAM is being updated so that it will work with DX12 and Vulkan. So it's not really a restriction, it's just that they have to be updated to work. Now there are restrictions specifically with the Windows Store titles, and Gears of War is one of those titles. There are a couple others, Quantum Break, we've talked about previously, so my thoughts are pretty clear on those. If you check out that video, we definitely railed against Microsoft a bit, but uh, the Windows Store I'm not a fan of right now. It reminds me a bit too much of Games for Windows Live. Microsoft's trying to do a bit too much of their control. Just using this UWP and different file extensions breaks pretty much everything, including control panels from GPU manufacturers. So that's a big problem. What they want to do and what they're actually doing I think are two different things. It sounds like they want to sort of unify the system between consoles and PC. Who knows what that really means? But what's happening is it's creating this sort of Games for Windows Live ecosystem where stuff breaks on the Windows Store platform but it works fine on Steam, so it just makes more sense to buy it somewhere else. But the idea, I guess, is, is potentially noble if they do it right. So speaking to the DX12 benchmarks using one GPU and the IGP, that's something I want to test, but it wasn't supported out the gate with those initial explicit DGPU DX12 functions that were built into some of the games that we've tested previously and Ashes of Singularity and the, uh, the puzzle game from Crow Team, Talos, the Talos Principle. Both of those are games that can be used DX12 and Vulkan for doing explicit multi-GPU testing in the future, but as far as I'm aware, they don't presently fully support IGP integration, so we can't really test that right now. But it would be interesting to see, definitely, kind of like a dual graphics setup with the AMD CPU and GPU. Next question is from... 
Cowstube3, who says, which is the weirdest issue you've had with your PC so far? Weirdest issue probably was a demon monitor that happened after a lightning strike. So there's a lightning strike, power surges always do lots of damage to equipment, I would not recommend them. And one of the CRT monitors I had back in the day actually became so possessed and demonic that it would kill systems. So I don't know how it happened, this is kind of before I was more on the technical side, but somehow just connecting the display to the PC would actually destroy the video card. And that was a result of the lightning strike. So that was very hard to troubleshoot and figure out because why would you su suspect a CRT monitor to be frying your GPUs? But that's probably the weirdest one I've had. Next question here, this is kind of a, a pretty real question. It looks like Perfect Circle 10002 asks, I have a question for the next episode. Is Star Citizen going to benefit from more than four cores? And also asks, is the sweet spot for gaming going to be six to eight cores? It does hyper-threading matter? Basically asking all about Star Citizen and threading. Star Citizen's on CryEngine. That means its threading is basically, spa it spawns one thread for each aspect of the game. So if you play Star Citizen now, you'll see that thread three is very heavily saturated. I'm not sure what's on thread three, but it's definitely being abused and they're probably going to optimize that going forward. But generally you see things like game logic being on one thread, AI on one thread, game rendering on one thread, maybe audio if it's complex enough is on one thread. So that's how CryEngine spawns these threads. And CryEngine was one of the first engines to really properly support eight total threads. So hyper-threading is actually, in fact, something that can be utilized by CryEngine and Star Citizen as an extension. Right now, there's, uh, it's not really a good time to test because the game is not fully built and optimized. Core 3 is being abused, but in our previous discussions with Chris Roberts, it was made very clear by him and his team that Star Citizen wants to utilize as many threads as it's given. So eight threads is probably where I would be looking just based on those discussions, but uh, I don't have a lot of test data right now that would suggest really where Star Citizen lies in the future. So we'll, we'll still have to wait for Squadron 42 to ship and see what that looks like as the first final product of the game before really knowing how the threading works, but that's the top level. I know that Chris does want to actually use as many threads as present. He wants to use eight and use hyper-threading and all that stuff. So it's a good sort of bet to look into that direction with CPUs. <laughs> Last question from Amon Roseman 3 who says, are you ever going to change your attire, black shirt and blue jeans? No. So thanks for watching Ask GN. I will see you all next week. Be sure to post questions in the comments below if you have any questions about tech or games that we can address. And of course, hit the Patreon link, the post troll video if you want to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.